and welcome back to another video from me, Manisha, at Ananda Pomatachi Project. As promised, I'm putting out a video as soon as I can after the previous one. And we're going to continue to talk about how to go around building a sustainable house. Now, I've noticed in some of my previous videos that the minute somebody spots a little bit of concrete or a little bit of cement, you know, I get comments saying that, oh, I thought you were building a sustainable house. But this does have a beam or a pillar or a plinth. Uh, you know. Now I want you to know that building a sustainable house or doing anything sustainable is actually a journey. The reason for that is because we live in a world which is extremely unsustainable. And many of the techniques and materials that we probably used to live sustainably are no longer in use. So it's quite difficult for us to actually completely reduce our dependence on any unsustainable material. What we can do, of course, is to minimize it. And that should be our aim. If some of you can do things without using any of the concrete or the beams or pillars that we have used, that would be great because you would have moved one step ahead and probably set an example for other people to follow. In future, if I come up with better techniques to not use any cement, I would love to embrace them. But with this project, there were places where we could not really find another sustainable alternative to things that already exist in modern construction. The kitchen roof is one such place. Now, we had to place a fairly large water tank on top of our kitchen roof. So we uh, took a call and said, okay, if there's one place in the house which will have a lentil as it's called here, or a pure concrete roof, it will be the kitchen. But it wasn't sitting too well with me. So we decided to make a filler slab instead. So to understand filler slab, I think first we have to understand what concrete is. So concrete slab is basically a rectangular or, or you can say it's a, it's a box, it's a thin box that's sitting on the, on the walls. So what's happening is because of its load, it tries to bend inwards. So what is happening is that there's compression and there's tension getting generated. So like I said, the concrete is very good for compression but not good for tension. So that's why we reinforce it with steel. And the, the, the area we put the steel in, in our slab is towards the bottom. Because what is happening is, let's say this is the slab and it's trying to bend like that. So if you look, the upward part of it is under compression and the below part is under tension. So wherever there's tension, we need the extra steel and wherever there's compression, we need the concrete. So what's happening here, uh, like why, why do we do fill a slab is basically to save concrete because we should not be putting concrete where actually it's not needed. So where the, where the work is being done by the steel, where there's more tension, we actually don't need the concrete there. So, uh, so in a filler slab, conceptually what we do is we kind of scoop out the concrete there at that point. Uh, but we do need some concrete for the framework to get embedded into and so that it still works as a cohesive uh, slab. Uh, so we, what we do is we we insert a material, you know, it could be any material, like in this case in Ananda, what we've done is we use these earthen pots and we've embedded them at the grid. So that what it does is, it lets us basically use about 10 to 15% less material. So we save on the material and also we gain on, you know, aesthetics, you know, if there's another element uh, that comes. Uh, Uh, the first step in building this uh, roof was to actually find pots to our specifications. But we needed about 100 of them. We actually spoke to many potters till we find, found one. They said, come to my factory and I will make what you're looking for. So we went all the way there and we placed an order for 100 pots which looked exactly as for our specifications. The pots are about 12 inch diameter and about 3 inches deep and have a lip. Uh, 
here in Ananda, what we've done is we've uh, given it at al almost like a distance of about center to center, about two feet, and there are about about 10, 11 inches uh, dia pots, you know, and they're about three inches in height. So that much volume we've reduced of the concrete. So we end up saving on the material. <laughs> हम सबसे पहले हमने इसका दो इंच डाउन करके फिनिश लेवल से इसको हम सेटरिंग किए उसके बाद हमने इसमें प्लास्टर किए प्लास्टर करके हमने इसके ऊपर नीरू किए उसके बाद हमने डीजल लगाए डीजल लगाने के बाद हमने इसको मटका रखे मटके रख करके उसके बाद हमने सोचे मटके कैसे हम इसको रोक पाए ताकि वो बाद में गिरे ना इसके ऊपर पहले तार से बांधे थे उसके बाद हमें लगा कि ये सक्सेस नहीं होगा तो हमने फिर एरल लाइट से लगा करके उसके ऊपर बजरी लगा करके चिपकाए उसके बाद हमने उस पर सरिया बांधे उसके बाद हमने कंक्रीट किए ऊपर में जो लेयर है हमने उसके छः इंची का रखे हैं वो चार इंची का मटका था उसमें दो इंची सिर्फ हम कॉन्क्रीट उसके ऊपर रखे हैं Once the concrete was poured, we allowed the roof to uh, cure for about two or three weeks. And then finally, we removed the shuttering from underneath. And when we did that, the uh, leveling plaster uh, fell off. And uh, finally, the pots were exposed. It took a little bit of cleaning for us to clean all the edges of the pots. Uh, but we have not put any other material on top of this roof. So there is no varnish, no plaster. No paint. It is just the concrete slab with the pots in between. So this is another kind of a roof that you could experiment with if you are looking to build yourself a sustainable house. Uh, every time you've taken a decision to not use some material or use a little lesser of it, all that helps. So much from us today. We hope you found this interesting and useful. Do subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. So see you again soon with yet another video either from my farm or from the house. This is Manisha signing off. Bye-bye.